Maybe this part shouldn't be recorded. We're here in Landlock, Colorado. Teaching kids to scuba dive and the importance of marine science and ocean conservation. Through a scholarship of a lifetime. Colorado day and we're getting ready to hop back in the pool. We've got some new scuba skills on tap and we're going to be talking about some really exciting marine careers. Here we go. You had the mercy of the you got the please, baby. So the How do you guys feel about taking your test tomorrow? I have a review sheet for you. Okay, SSI is not out to trick you. They're not out to show you something you've never seen before. So go home, review the SSI. Communication, I find, is key. So as you guys, well, you guys are involved in a web series for Pete's sake. The whole point of that is communication, right? You all right? You good? Just like waking up, get the sleep out of your eyes? Should we toss you in the pool? <laughs> Josh, he's not coming Josh today. Josh and Lindsay is at a track meet or something. That's what I'm, okay, I yeah, Josh's mom texted me yesterday and said he's not feeling well. Hey guys, as you all know, um, probably I'm kind of sick. I'm in bed today, and everyone else is scuba-ing, scuba-ing, scuba scuba at Ocean First. And um, so I hope you guys are having fun and that y'all do really well on your tests and um, pass. And I know you guys will. Tomorrow when you guys come in, if you have any questions, we'll go over the questions. If you want to go over this, we can go over this. I find that most students just want to get done. Dealing with panic. What are the signs that a diver is panicked? Wide eyes. Wide eyes. What else? <sighs> Sporadic breathing. Sporadic breathing. Lots of bubbles. Who was a little anxious before we went into the aquarium? Guys, I saw your faces. <laughs> so it's okay to feel a little anxiety. Don't let it overwhelm you. Talk to me or talk to your dive buddy about what's making you anxious. Review your gear. You know your gear. By the time you guys are jumping off that boat in Florida, you're going to know all your skills. Congratulations, you finished your PowerPoint. Tomorrow is going to be your exam. Before you guys get your exam tomorrow, we'll go over any questions you have. And then we're going to hit the pool. It's been a little while since our last pool session. And so everybody's really excited to get in the water today. And energy's high. And we're ready to do this. We've got to go home. Oh, what? the battery died. It, no. uh, I know. So, and I didn't bring another one because it, it'll last for an hour and a half, two hours. So I'll be back in about 50 minutes. Okay, so Emily's been having a lot of issues with her mask fogging up. Just fogs up every time I take a single breath. And it's kind of frustrating, but um, I hope it'll get better after today. We have done this like four times and the mask keep, keeps fogging up. So well, let's hope today it doesn't fog at all. Hopefully. <laughs> like this to prom next year. <laughs> All right, you guys should have your masks, circles in your hands. Today, Kathy is going to be running them through a skill review from some things we did last week, and then there's going to be some new skills as well. They're going to be learning to do the weight belt removal and replace. One, two, three. As well as sharing air with their buddy. You never want to just take your regulator out and be waiting. This serves as a plug, and you never know when you might get a little sip of air out of it. We're going to look at each other. How do you reduce panic in a diver? You make eye contact. She's going to ask me if I'm OK, and I'm going to reply that, yes, I'm OK. If I'm not OK, and I need to take a minute, I'm going to tell her. You guys ready? So discuss with your buddy what you'd like to do. So, Andrew, what's going on? 
I don't know if it's weird. I, I pay the bottom of my high rate here. Whenever I start to send, I start getting pain. I bet it's gotta be allergy related. Yeah. Are you in the cremal canal or your tear duct might be clogged? Yeah. Which would cause pain, because remember, it's all pressure related. So what I want you to do is take your gear off, rinse it, rinse it, and hang it up, but leave your mask, fins, and snorkel right by the side of the pool. Leave your boots on, leave your wetsuit on, because you're gonna do your swim test with everybody else, all right? Cool. Awesome. See you in a bit. Cool. when I first started because I was like so nervous because like I didn't really expect the test to be like today because she told me are we gonna do the flowing tomorrow so I was like okay I'll have time to prepare myself like I'll be fine and then she's like you know what I changed my mind we're gonna like blow up today and I was like I, I don't know I, I like freaked out I know I did and then like I feel like I looked panicked but then like after a while she's like just breathing slowly and out and I was just like okay I got this and then I did it relax I just have to say, Fatima is doing so awesome. She's come so far. You have to remember, she learned how to swim so that she could do this program. And now she's out here floating, doing her swim test, and all the students are rocking it. It wasn't even that bad. I don't know why I freaked out. how you can safely share air with your buddy or your buddy share air with you so that you both can make it back to the surface safely. I just wanted to say huge thanks to you guys. This is so cool that we get to do this. It's a kind of a dream come true, like, just crazy. So, um, like, I don't know of anyone else who's going scuba diving in Florida. <laughs> so thank you so much. It's a huge blessing. Uh, and probably none of us would be able to do this by ourselves. So you guys are making a huge uh, opportunity available for us. And we just, uh, we really appreciate it. Class is dismissed. <laughs> How's it going so far? Good. Yeah, you guys still as excited as you were on day one? Yeah. Not more? More. 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 Awesome. <laughs> uh, the intent of this semester uh, scholarship that you guys receive is a lot more than just teaching you marine science and um, scuba diving. The idea was to also incorporate relevant issues, topics that are uh, facing us today 
and things that you guys are going to have to deal with as you get older. Mara actually wrote a book called Sex and the Sea, and she did a presentation here at Ocean First, and that's actually how we first met. But that's not what she's going to be talking about today. <laughs> They're all like, yeah. <laughs> Another area of expertise is uh, sustainable uh, seafood and what's happening in the ocean. And really show you that there's a lot more opportunities and doors out there than you might uh, have realized. So thank you for coming. I hope you guys really enjoy the presentation. Awesome. Thanks, Graham. Yeah. When you think of a marine scientist, when you think of the field of ocean sciences, what, what do you picture for a job? What comes to I mind? Study like animal population and how many there are. Trying to figure out how to like conserve, like, especially with the plastic problem I know that's coming up. Yeah, conservation. Around the world, tens of millions of sharks every year are caught either as bycatch or are targeted, particularly for shark fins. One of the more um, honestly grotesque practices that we do um, in terms of fishing in, in the sea because what happens is the whole shark is wasted, right? So that shark does have meat that could feed people, but instead um, what they do is they just target the fins, they slice the fins off, dump the body of the shark back over. Like that's messed up, they shouldn't be doing that. Like, how would you like it if you, you got an arm chopped off and you're just like, like that would not, like that, well actually that's more like cutting off one of our legs. It, it can be easy to get bummed out, there is there is bad news, and it's important that we pay attention to the things that are going wrong. And I think the amount of innovation that's out there is really important to also tap into. Okay, that's the bad news. That's, that's the bummer of the situation. But the good news is that there is actually a ton of new research happening now. And this is what I mean when I say that right now it's a really exciting time to get into ocean sciences. There are so many talents, resources, and expertise that we need outside of science to help solve these problems. So there's a lot to draw on that is positive and that is working well. And we just have to make sure that we make the time to learn from what's working and think about how we can scale that and how we can replicate that. And if you do wind up, hopefully, becoming ocean warriors and dedicating your life to ocean work, you're gonna do that for the rest of your life. And again, thinking really broadly and understanding the way that policy is made, understanding economics, understanding uh, history so you can know deep patterns and, and be able to think of, of things on larger time scales than our own lifetimes. So lots of different ways we can, we can deal with these challenges. None of these solutions is just science, right? A lot of what science needs is creative ideas, but also folks from different disciplines to help implement them. We need engineers, and we need technologists, and we need folks who can start to think differently. We need the folks who deal with the water treatment plants where all half of this garbage is going in. I mean, because it's not just plastics. We also have problems with all of the chemicals that we use in our homes that get flushed down into the drains. That, those micromolecules get, go right out through into the sea. They're not filtered out in our wastewater treatment systems because they're chemicals rather than particles. We filter particles out. So with that, I will end and just say, what kind of marine scientist will you be? We need more ocean warriors. And being an ocean warrior may mean you log a thousand hours underwater a month and are wearing masks and fins all the time. It may mean you're in a lab, and it may mean that you're not in the ocean every day, and instead you're using your talents and skills in other ways, and then just going and taking every vacation you possibly can to get in the water. So thank you guys. I hope that was helpful. Um, I'm super optimistic, so if you guys are on social media, do social media. Ocean Optimism, this is where the community captures the things that are working and says, yes, there's problems and there's solutions. So after all that, what, what do you guys think? What comes to mind as you sit here and kind of digest all of that? You don't even really have to like be in the water the whole time, which many people believe they do. Like, I could just be chilling here in Colorado and I could still be like an ocean like scientist. And I also just really love learning about how you, you don't, you can be part of ocean conservation without necessarily being in the water at all times and I think that's kind of a route that I'm looking to pursue especially with like speech and debate and kind of more of a passion in policy issues I think I can make an impact using that. Change is possible and that the field of ocean science and ocean conservation is the most exciting space I think to be in and that it offers endless opportunity 
And we need good minds and we need talents from so many different disciplines. So no matter what they may be interested in, there's a way they could apply that to help create positive change for the sea. episode we have our last training session before we hit the open water in the Florida Keys and we take a closer look at invasive species like the lionfish. That was introduced into the... You're photobombing my shot man? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>